Kairin pulls it back. They don't deal with it. Glenn Cray! Pulls one back. Is that the lifeline? Now for Dals. On the turn. They've surely got to put it in. That will count. It's good. And it's a late goal here. Joel Chu. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of SPL Social and today we are joined by two prospects in Singapore youth football. It's a Tampanese Bova special with Glenn Quay and Joel Ko. Thank you so much for joining me guys. Finally, after a season, I think we had so many requests for you guys. So thank you for joining me. Once again guys, I want to ask you all what you all think of the game against Geelang. Let's start nice and proper first. <laughs> Glenn, the 1-1 one -one draw of course. So obviously the, the results the result wasn't what we desired. Uh, we came here wanting to get the three points, but obviously we drew the game and we dropped two crucial points. And uh, at this stage of the season, I think every point is you know, very important, especially if you want to challenge for a title. So, and the title is what you guys are looking at, definitely, yes, right? Yes, Not course. just an AFC spot. Yes. Joel, your thoughts? I mean, you played pretty well, I saw as well. Uh, I think it was definitely two points dropped. I think we did enough in the end to win the game. We created enough. Uh, chances to to basically bring the three points back lah. But in the end, I guess that's football when you you don't take your chances, uh, you don't win games. So yeah, it was two points drop, and but we just have to move on. There's still eight games left, so the last round we have to end it end the league strong. Still eight games left, which is going to be a very exciting title race, okay? But I want to ask you, both of you, Glenn and Joel, you're both very much built as the future of Singapore football by many, many fans. What do you guys think about that, Glenn? Your, your thoughts? Uh, I'm thankful that they think that way. Uh, because, you know, it's a dream of mine since young to represent the nation. And, uh, I mean, it's just nice that they think that way, lah. Yeah. Uh, same, same, uh, just grateful. Just grateful and flattered by people's comments like uh, about us as football players because uh, we, we've worked since uh, young to achieve this dream of ours uh, and it's nice to have people recognise our efforts and hopefully we'll do better and bring glory back to Singapore football. Speaking of which, I'm very curious, you guys are the same age, are you all, did you all start the same as well? Uh, no, we went on different paths yeah. which yeah. eventually led to the same. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Okay, then I want to ask you a bit about your experience now. Since you met nice at uh, Tampanese Rovers, right? What do you enjoy about the club? What do you enjoy playing with each other and the team? Uh, for me, um, I really like Tampanese style of football, uh, which was what got me here in the first place. Uh, I like to play like possession-based football and the way that Templeys move the ball is just something nice to see and it's something that I love to be part of. Uh, same because uh, I'm, not, I'm not like the biggest of players so uh, I like to have more of the ball, more touches of the ball and I think the way Templeys plays suits uh, me as a player. So yeah, and I think the team this season is very well bonded in the sense that uh, Everybody's like just bouncing off each other and the vibes in the changing room are just good in general. You know, uh, I'll get back to that a little bit about the possession style, but I want to ask you all, uh, both, because both of you have served national service and you come and played football, I mean, went through the Young Lions route, right? So I want to ask you all, you, did national service impact or disrupt your game in any way? Uh, I would definitely think it did uh, because you know, some players they're lucky uh, in the sense that they get to you know leave national service to go for trainings and matches. But in my case, I wasn't that lucky, so uh, I wasn't allowed to leave uh, my camp for trainings. So that was like two important years wasted, which kind of hindered my development a bit. Yeah. So, by, so you were in your camp mostly. You weren't allowed to train. Were you able to do anything within the camp to keep yourself fit? <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously they do conduct like exercises yeah. for you to maintain your fitness yeah. and all. But like. Football wise now. So so why why is it different? Why did some players get to go out and why and why did some not? Uh, I think it depends on like your in your intake, like which unit you get posted to. Okay, okay. Yeah. Joel, did it disrupt you like in any way? I think not as much as it did for Glenn because I was I was one of the lucky ones to be able to 
be released to still train and compete and play for Young Lions during my time in NS. So I wouldn't say it hindered very much, but when I was in NS, uh, I wasn't with Tampines and during that two years, I think I missed out on like having the chance to compete in the Champions League, which uh, Tampines went to. And I think ultimately, it, I guess it, it kind of hinders your experience in a way where you don't get to go as many competitions as you possibly would if you didn't attend National Service. Okay, then enough of the National Service talk. I want to ask you all a bit about your childhood. How did you guys fall in love with football? What made you fall in love with the beautiful game, Glenn? Uh, I think my dad played a very important role because he's a very big uh, football fan. Okay. So I think he influenced me in a way to like pick up football as a sport in primary school. Oh. So yeah, that's how I started playing football. And then from there, I represented schools and then played for clubs and then eventually in NFA and then... It's always yeah, the dads yeah. and the moms, right? So, um, thank you Mr. Kuei for <laughs> helping Glenn over here. Joel, for yourself, what made you fall in love with football? Uh, my parents, because every time my dad would... Uh, my, my parents would bring me along to my dad's Sunday Leagues game. Oh. Yeah, so... So I would you just, used to play also your dad? Uh, yeah. So I would just uh, be by the side and just kick with all the uncles <laughs> that I'm playing. So yeah, that's how I initially fell in love with the game. Yeah. So listen guys, the reason why our Joel here is known as the Iniesta of football is because in Singapore football, because he's been kicking with all the uncles. So thanks to all the uncles who helped develop our players today. Glenn, we've got a question from Javier Teo. Thanks for your fan questions by the way guys. Why did Tampanese put you at left back and not winger? I asked myself that as well. <laughs> Uh, okay, but uh, so initially, like the system that we adopt in Tampines was that uh, you know, I'm part of the fallback, but when we have the ball, I'm more of like a winger, so I like push up. And this is because I would, I would think that Tampines always have the ball, so like most of the time I would spend my time as a winger. But uh, there were quite a few instances where we get caught up uh, in during transitions, which was why I think. Right now, I'm more of like a defensive left back. Like I don't tend to move forward as often as I do uh, at the start of the season. But the more question, important question is, do you enjoy this position? Um, <laughs> it's debatable. Okay. I would say. <laughs> debatable. Yeah, let's not go there. Okay, I mean, again, like I said, because you're still young, there's still opportunities for you to try different positions when you're playing. You, know, you never know, you could go back to your beloved, you know, uh, winger role. Um, okay, Joel, I want to ask you, you know, I don't know whether many of you all know this, but Joel here is actually a massive gaming fan. He even won the ESPL when I was hosting it a couple of years ago, I remember that. So I got a question from this kid, uh, 40, thanks for the question. He asked, how do you juggle both gaming and, and football and what game are you currently playing right now? Uh, the game, I'm, I just play every, uh, the newest FIFA that is out. So for right now, it's FIFA 23. And uh, how do I juggle both? Uh, Does it help you, by the way, when you play and you play FIFA I on think, the pitch? I, I think on the pitch helps me with FIFA. Like, you help to understand the game a little bit better. Yeah, so uh, in that sense, I, I don't know whether I juggle both very well, but... Uh, <laughs> Glenn's laughing. So you, you play FIFA with him too, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. And he I play FIFA. <laughs> He has beaten me a couple of times. Oh, wow. Which is true lah, which is true lah. Which is true, but... Majority, majority. We majority? Majority, majority. majority ah. <laughs> so we got some bragging rights here from Glenn. So, um, the other question is, when are you going to stream on Twitch again? Oh, uh, I haven't been streaming for a very long time. But, maybe hopefully when uh, the season, like during off season, maybe. get Glenn on the stream with you. Yeah, I, I will. People want to see Glenn and you. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Top wins, uh. <laughs> Okay, Glenn. I mean, I want to talk a little bit more about you as a gamer since we're already on it. Do you, how often like do you play, and do you think it helps your, you know, your your role as a footballer as well? For me, I just play during my free time. It's just like past time. Uh, I don't really put that much thought when I'm playing. I just like. Just play, enjoy. yeah. Just enjoy, and uh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't, I don't yeah. see much of a relation between. You know, you guys should gang out together for the next ESPL. Who knows? Uh, might win this year's one if they're having it. Okay, 
Now I want to ask you, as young players, right, do you guys face any obstacles as you're coming up, you know, in your journey in Singapore and then, you know, how have you guys worked through them, if any? Uh, I think for me, it's more about... Because when I was young, my mom's the one who always, like, emphasised a lot about studies. And I remember in primary school, like, if I don't do well in my studies, like, she won't let me go for trainings and all. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, so, I think... Like the op the only obstacle that I like kind of faced was like you know trying to do well in my studies so I can go for football, but then again trying to juggle both will be tiring. Yes. Yeah. So it's all about like managing managing your time well. Yeah. But you're studying as well at the moment, are you? Uh, yes, yes. What are you guys both? Are you guys studying together or? No, just. No, just. Like doing, are you studying too? Uh, planning to. What are you planning to study? Uh, business at SIM. Joel, the future business man. No, I want to ask you. You know, because Joel, we always see comments on social media, you know, talking about your silky moves and your passes. How have you trained for this? Like, what was, what's your training regimen to perfect your game? I think it's just the, the love of the game and always wanting to just be with the ball. So it's like, every time from young, I would... This is not even an, exagger an exaggeration, but I would like report like two, three hours early, and my mom would just bring me to my training sessions two, three hours early. Sometimes she would question why, why I would want to go so early, but I would just go two, three hours just to kick a ball and just, just play, you know. Yeah. So I think that the extra bit actually helped me um, master my craft in a sense. So. I so do you still do that to this day? Uh, Ken's laughing when you come at 5 in the morning, who knows? Uh, I'll try to, but uh, not as much because uh, as, as we grow older, like, there's, I, don't, I don't know why, it's just the energy levels just can't be matched as when we were younger. Yeah. I totally get that. But Joe, I want to ask you, um, you know, because you, you talked about dedication and all, um, but how do you like, actually, because like, I know that you, have, you probably have this vision when you're passing the ball, who to go to next, you know, because I've seen you play as well. How did you know manage? To, how do you work on that mental aspect? You know, to be able to plan how you pass and all that. Uh, I don't know. I think it just come, kind of comes naturally. Like when in the game, you don't really have that much time to think. So, whenever there's an opportunity to make the pass, or when I see an opening, I just, I just do it. Then I don't know. It's just a natural reaction in a sense. But I think it just comes with uh, years of training and being put in the same situation over and over again. So you just know what to do and when to do it, yeah. You guys have that telepathy on the pitch as well, can you, do you like... Uh, I would say so, <laughs> I would say so. I would yeah. say so. Ooh, speaking of telepathy, let's go to the fun question. What, okay, if you guys could have any superpower, what would it be, Glenn? Mine? Uh, I think, I honestly think it would be the ability to print money. <laughs> I think it's a very good Super Bowl, yeah. Mm -hmm. so money for you all the time. Better be Singapore dollars, uh, not Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's real, real as well, real money. Real, real money. That's a good Super Bowl, okay? Then then you wouldn't be playing football probably if you had that Super Bowl. No, okay. I'll, I'll still, I'll still. Oh, you still yeah, play? Yeah. Maybe you can buy a Saudi team, who knows? Mm. Okay. That's true, that's true. Joel, if you have your Super Bowl, you see your Apparently, it's very lame according to Glenn, but uh, it's, the, it's quite a common answer, the ability to teleport, like to go oh, anywhere whenever I want. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so if you had the superpower, where would you want to teleport right now? Right now? I have no... Teleport home. So I don't have to take <laughs> Grab here and there, you know, save on transport. Sorry, sorry about But with, with the ability to print money, you can do this. Right. Exactly. But I save Your time. Will be I save time. That's smart. So time is more important than money for yes. you. Oh, that's Fair enough. why. No, got that. That whole Joel Chu brain. Okay, now I'm gonna go a little bit more about um, your manager because I've been hearing a lot about Gavin, right? So, guys, can you just tell me, you know, honestly, how is it like playing for Gavin? What is he like as a manager? Uh, for me, I think uh, what sets him apart from like other managers is his uh, like attention to detail. So it's like very particular about the small small details, yeah. which uh, I think, which was what gave us like the edge over like yep. other teams in in the league. Yeah, I think he's one of the most hardworking coaches because he's he can be like for example a game day just ended he he will be up editing clips for individual players. 
all the way until maybe 3, 5 a.m. you'll see him sending it into the group when sometimes next day still have training at like 11 a.m. So, so he edits clips for every individual place. You guys actually get videos of you, how you guys perform. Yeah, of the game how long itself. Are the clips? Uh, 16 minutes oh per play. Yeah. That's next level dedication. Yeah. Didn't know yeah. that amazing stuff. I need to see your clip now after this. Uh. See whether you all <laughs> could have the yeah, power. Okay, but I want to ask you as well. Um, you know a little bit more about if you want a footballer, right? What pathway would you guys take? And what would you want to be? Honestly, I'm, I'm still not too sure, like, to this day. But I think it'll probably be some, like, corporate job, like, some 9 to 5. A banking job, maybe, yeah. since you like money so much. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> yes, that's correct. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do something like psychology. I like Ooh. I like something to do with, like, mental... Joe's a very health. deep person, as we can see. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the mentalist. That's why he's very good at, you know, I would say, envisioning the passes. Okay, you know, we've got a question from Sailor Fan Talk, you know, a little bit more before we leave. Um, they want to know, is it difficult balancing your studies and football? Glenn, I think this is for you. Uh, I mean, I've been doing that for the past couple of years, so I'm kind of, like, used to it. But it can get tiring, like, especially during periods where, like, most of your assignments are due, or, like, nearing, like, the exams. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's all about which one you prioritise more, lah. True, yeah. true. Okay. I want to ask you, okay, now we've got some issue in Singapore football when it comes, when it comes to the youth team, under 23 team, but you know, as aspiring youth players, right, what's your advice for all those people who have doubts or who you know, want to break into football as well? Uh, I think it's very important to believe in yourself. Uh, because if you don't, then who will? Uh, and it's also, I think it's very important to get your, like, your fundamentals right. I think that's the most important. And to have like, to like instill good habits from young, like you know, like scanning before every pass and that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just say, en enjoy your football. Not everything has to be so serious when you're younger. So, I think when you enjoy the game, that's when you're playing your best football. So, I think it's very important that you. I I mean, you can see it as a career path in the sense where you want to pursue it as a job, but. Uh, don't ever take the fun out of playing the sport because that's what got us playing in the first place. Oh yeah, enjoy your football. That's what football is about. It's a beautiful game. Don't be so negative. And speaking of negativity guys, I know uh, you probably, maybe not you guys, but you probably your, your friends or your teammates have probably seen some of the negative comments. I mean, how would you guys react or how would you like advise, I don't know, how would you guys overcome this, this kind of negativity? Actually for me, it's quite entertaining in that sense. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't usually take like the comments like seriously. Yeah, yeah too seriously. But yeah. Joe, for yourself, like. Uh, if it's constructive criticism, then I will take it on board. <laughs> but if it's just like constant bashing, then I will just most probably just read and then just ignore. You know. That's actually yeah. very good. You know, for youth players, especially, it's very important to keep your mind strong. You know, and to focus on the game. Okay, and lastly, before we go, I just want to say thank you so much, Glenn and Joel, for having, for joining me. It was a very good, really good chat. But I want you all to give a message to all the fans out there who support you guys, even Tampani's fans perhaps. Maybe Glenn first? Yeah, I would like to thank the fans for their continuous support and I uh, hope that you'll continue supporting us, uh, be it in uh, the SPL League or the national team. Joel? Uh, just a big thank you to everyone that's been supporting us for ever since the start of our journey and hope you guys will continue supporting us in the future and hopefully we'll do Singapore proud. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much both uh, Joel and Glenn. I had so much fun speaking with you and getting to know you guys a little bit more and I hope that you guys out there are very happy with the responses today. And do follow them on social media, you know, you want to interact with them and send them all your messages of support. I'll see you guys next time in the next episode of SPL Social. See y'all!